crankbaits I'm making. One of them will be slightly slender compared to the ones that I usually make. Um, I'd like it not to dive too deeply, so I'm going to weight the bottom so it stays upright quite a bit. I'm going to put a very small bill on it. Uh, here you see the general shape. And the other one that I'm going to make at the same time is the small, about two and a half inch uh, standard crankbait. After I cut out the patterns, which as you can see is happening pretty quickly here, um, I'm going to just uh, glue them with a the, uh, glue stick onto a piece of pine, a piece of pine that I've been using for uh, pretty much all of my baits up to this point. I'll take them over to the band saw and then cut them out on the scroll saw. Finally, touch the uh, edges up on the uh, belt sander. I'm going to mark the taper on them. I kind of uh, do this freehand as far as. Uh, marking the uh, dot points and then I draw the, uh, the lines. Back over to the belt sander, take the shape down and I did uh, cut the, one of these with a bandsaw first, a little head start on it. And uh, time to take the uh, template off, I won't need that now. And using a razor knife, start doing some carving. Uh, I cut a little few parts of this out, it takes quite a while, and uh, speed it up a lot, as you can see. Take it down with 100 grit paper and eventually some uh, 240. We're getting there. There's a lot of this too, and here are the, uh, the finished baits as far as getting ready to paint. Both bill slots need to be cut, and the eye sockets need to be drilled. Finally, the forcing a bit is used to drill the holes for the uh, lead in the bellies. This one I'm drilling quite deep. And here we go with the um, eyelet holes for the hooks and the line. I'm going to make six eyelets, three for each lure. So here's one being made with number 18 stainless steel wire and the result. Not bad. Needs to be straightened out a little bit. And using my homemade lead pot to uh, fill the uh, holes with lead for ballast. Not bad. I've got a little baking soda in a uh, pill bottle here and I'm going to put some over the ballast lead holes and then using a little bit of super glue and giving it a few seconds it'll harden and make a good plug for them. Making the bills and gluing in with epoxy, the eyelets, and the diving bills on each of the lures. And one final step before painting is to um,
tape up the bills. As you can see, they're already done. I'm going to make a small hanging wire and dip each of the lures into a good quality sanding sealer to seal the wood so when I paint it, the, wood won't, uh, the paint won't soak into the wood. It will ride on top and uh, look smooth. And here they are drying, getting ready for painting with the airbrush. Well, the first thing we're going to do here is um, paint the two lures white uh, as a base coat. Um, but I am also going to paint this piece of plastic pipe white. It's already white, but I want to put a primer coat on it. And uh, try out uh, the curing um, chamber with uh, the UV light with some uh, resin on it. Um, I haven't tried it yet. I want to make sure it works on this before I actually go and put it on my lures because if it doesn't work good, then I'm the first time using it. Um, I'll end up using the, la the uh, epoxy like I usually do. Um, I'll need 30 minutes or more for this to cure, so we'll do everything white. Then while I'm painting these lures, uh, we'll put it in the uh, resin box and, um, and let, let it work on this and see how things go. Um, this uh, lure is going to be very red when I'm done. And my other lure, which is uh, a little more elongated, uh, getting the base coat of white on it. This lure is going to be whitish. It is going to end up a little green. And of course, the small piece of pipe. Now it's dry. I'm going to put the resin on it. Some transparent pearl on the base of the lure that's going to be red and all over the, uh, the lure that's going to be whitish. Here's some transparent silver. Um, I've got screen around the uh, one of the lures and it's held on with alligator clips and uh, we're spraying some, some scale look on here. Drying it. I'm going to peel off the screen and I know it doesn't show good on here but it will at the end. The scales are actually there. solid silver over the top to kind of hide the scales up there and darken it up. And now some very bright green on the top and a little down the sides. That will be followed up with a standard green. Now for the other bait, standard red, all over. A little bit darker red along the back and a little bit down the sides. Okay, I put a little bit of black into the red to sort of muddy it out. Just for the black back. Well, 
By the way, the curing resin seems to have hardened. It took about 20 minutes. Might have taken less, I don't know. I didn't check. Ah, oh, great. It works. I just did this side. It seems to be quite hard and smooth. Good. Well, now I'm using a small fan brush, sort of flailed out a little bit to make a, uh, a rough striped pattern. And I'm using uh, black paint, but I'm using it with uh, very low pressure, so uh, it's not going to make a, a, a lot of a lot of black on the, on the paint. And it actually looks like a little bit more, but uh, it's hard to pick up with, uh, with this camera at this distance. And the other side. a little bit and now I'll connect them by putting uh, some black along the back of the bait. Back to the green one. The one is supposed to be very light colored. It started out to be really white but uh, it ended up being a little green. Um, using a little yellow for the gills. And now a slight bit of deepened red for the edge of the gill. And a little red along the front edge on the bottom. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking a little bit of gold paint and I'm putting it on a stiff brush when I flick it. It'll make specks. It's not going to show too much and uh, when you see the baits finished you'll see it a little bit more. Uh, not much at this distance. These are some of the eyes that I made. Um, I'm going to put some green ones on this bait. Try different colors, this one looked best to me. And we're going to put some red ones. These are commercially made ones, they're much smaller. Notice the white shad dot I put on the side. And here they are hung up. They look better with a clear coat on, but right now they're going to cure overnight before I do that. I've made a small tin foil tray to put into the bottom of this. Um, I figure the resin will, will eventually drip and, and probably pile up. And the worst case thing, it might glue my, my two nail um, dryers together. So if I ever need to take it out to change a bulb, I'd have to be able to get them apart. Which might make it easier to change a bulb. So we'll slip that right down into the bottom. And it's lying flat. There we go. The two lures are ready for the top coat. The Illumi UV, which I wanted, um, isn't available. It's back ordered for at least a couple of months. So I um, went on the uh, recommendation of a few people online, including the Engineered Angler, which you should check out his YouTube video. He's very good. And I purchased this Chinese knockoff. Um, they've tested it, and they seem to think it's pretty much the same stuff. I'm wondering if, uh, because of the tariffs, which are on at this um, point in time, might have stopped um, them from getting it from China. And they may just be getting it from China, repackaging it, and then I'm marking the price up and selling it to us in the US. Um, I'm wondering if it's act actually the same thing. So, we're going to take and uh, put some of this on the lures, and they are ready to go. Both very unusual in my estimation. And there's the other one. And we'll put the top coat on and put them in the new UV chamber and see how things go. My brush is actually in this little metal tube, which is actually a curtain rod spinner to close the blinds um, that I had left over. Level lower. You may recognize it. And uh, the brush, which is a decent quality craft brush, should last a long time. But as long as you keep it out of the ultraviolet light and sealed, it should stay good. 
Okay, I've taken some of the resin and um, poured it into the small cup, and I've added a little silver glitter to it, which I have had a habit of really enjoy putting on my lures lately. So, I shouldn't pick this up, I just cleaned it off. But, Now the glitter, when it, um, when the resin hardens with the epoxy that I've used anyway, um, it shows more now, but when it hardens it doesn't show as much until you get it just in the right light, which down in the depths of the, the water probably doesn't matter too much. Well, these things are dry to the touch after 20 minutes. So, um, my first time doing this, so I think I am going to maybe give them another coat and uh, put them in again. And here are the two lures, complete with split rings and hooks, and um, my complete menagerie of lures that I've made since I started learning how to do them, sort of from left to right in the order that I've made them. Uh, a little something extra, um, I want to tie some uh, trailer hooks, um, and I've got the materials for it, but uh, I kind of like to make my own stuff, so here is a uh, vice for doing that. It's made with vice grips, costs about just a few bucks from a Harbor Freight, and uh, ground down to uh, get rid of the teeth and uh, mount it on a stand. Hope it works good.